Welcome to Study in Japan, Online University Fair 2022. Yesterday, we had 1,300 attendees from around the world. We hope we will have more today. Everyone, we are excited to have you join us today. My name is Yuriko Take from Osaka University, and I'll be moderating this 80-minute part one hosted by Osaka University. A few housekeeping notes before we begin. I hope you can all hear and see the slide okay. If you have any technical issues, please write to us in the chat. If you have any question for the presenter, please use Q&A box. We will try to answer the question during the presentation. But if time runs out, we will answer your question after the event. Now, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Toshie Kai, Director of Student Mobility Unit, Center for Global Initiatives. She will give us an opening remark. I will turn the session over to Kai Sensei. Kai Sensei, the ball is in your coat. Hi everyone, I'm Toshi Kai. I'm the uh, Director of Student Mobility Unit at the Center for Global Initiatives, Osaka University. First of all, we really welcome all of you to this online university fair 2022 hosted by Osaka University. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, in these two years, it's been a very tough time for everyone due to COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, to prevent its spread, Japanese government has been implementing tight emulation restrictions, even for international students who are hoping to enroll at the universities in Japan. But finally, our government decided to open an app and the quarantine will be also shortened. We believe international students who are enrolling at university in Japan should be able to enter Japan without lots of difficulties. We are really happy about it. We hope this event will guide you to find a suitable university in Japan. Lastly, we would like to thank you again for joining this event. Please enjoy. Thank you, Kai Sensei. Okay, let me briefly explain what we have for you today. As you can see on the slide, our fair consists of two parts. During part one, we prepared to present general information about studying and living in Japan. And we also invited international students and graduates to share their experiences. In part two, 23 universities from around Japan will present their institutions programs, and admission information. During this time, you can directly interact with university representatives. These 20 universities are from seven different regions, Tohoku, Chubu, Kanto, Shikoku, Kyushu, Chugoku, and Kansai. We encourage you to visit universities in different regions to understand, understand their unique features. Here is a timetable for part two. Each session continues for 30 minutes with five minutes break. And during each time slot, we have about four to six universities presenting. Here you can see the schedule for today. You can also find this timetable along with university introductions from the event homepage. Please scan the QR code on the screen to visit the homepage. And this is the schedule for today. This page is from the event homepage. Go to the homepage 
and select schedule menu and click the name of university on the timetable. You will be able to access the online session of that university. Tips to attend part two. During every break between session, we will share the links for the next session at the end of each university session. This main room will be open during the whole time. So if you have any questions, please feel free to come back here. Now, let's go over today's outline. First, we have a short video by JASO, Japan Student Services Organization, about introduction to Japan. Next, our faculties, former international students at Osaka University, will share their experiences of studying and living in Japan. After that, we have a presentation by JASO about studying and living in Japan. Then we will have a session, International Students Voice, who are participating from different parts of Japan. After learning about student life in Japan, we will learn about finding jobs in Japan. At the end of part one, we are pleased to share a video message for all of you particularly those who are waiting to arrive in Japan. Well, it is time to imagine what it is like to study and live in Japan. Are you ready? Ready? Let's go for, the, for a trip to Japan. Enjoy this video made by JASO. Japan, an economic superpower known for powerful leadership in the global society. Studying amidst Japan's rich appeal will dramatically expand your personal growth. Made in Japan inspires global trust for stellar performance and technology. Supporting this Japan are innovative manufacturing and artisan techniques plentiful in history and tradition. Unmanned space cargo ships, spearheading the quest for safe commodity transport to the International Space Station. The Shinkansen bullet train, fusing safety and precision operation. Mighty bridges, showcasing sophisticated expertise and breathtaking beauty. High-speed elevators, imperative in high-rise buildings, evolving to the concept of linking the Earth to outer space with space elevators. Japan's unique culture and ingenuity raise achievements and breakthroughs to ever greater heights. Japan, lacking natural resources, rose to economic superpower status on the strength of superior education and technology. Together with traditional scholastic realms, Japanese educational excellence is likewise nurtured in animation, games, and other modern fields. Higher education in Japan includes five major categories. Although most classes are in Japanese, many university undergraduate and graduate degrees are offered in English only. Japan's government supports expanded hiring of international students domestically, with the number of such persons employed here steadily increasing. One promising career option for international students is working at globally active Japanese companies. Living in Japan, with one of the world's lowest crime rates, is safe and pleasant. Japan's health insurance system provides advanced medical care at low costs. International students in Japan can live securely on their own. Japan's constitution guarantees all residents freedom of religion, speech, and thought. Today, Japan is host for approximately 300,000 international students from over 170 nations throughout the world. 
so please consider studies in Japan, seizing the opportunity to build an even brighter and more fulfilling future. Study in Japan. Japan. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm happy to invite Kai Sensei again and Ariuna Sensei, Sissy Sensei, Clement Sensei, and Lee Sensei here. They are from four different countries China, Mongolia, Indonesia, and Japan to talk about their experiences and impressions of studying, living, and working in Japan. Everyone, can you please quickly introduce yourself? Okay, my name is Toshikai. Uh, I'm a professor, uh, full professor in Osaka University. I lived in the States for seven years and Singapore for 10 years. Hi, I'm Ariona from Mongolia. Nice to see you all here. Hi, I'm Shishi Zhang from China. Nice to see you here. Hi, everyone. I'm Clemens. I'm from Indonesia. Nice to see you. Hello, everyone. I'm Mindy from China. Ariona Sensei. I've heard that you're um, introducing about travel and sightseeing in Japan. Could you share your stories? Sure. So um, one of the things I enjoy the most about Japan uh, is traveling and sightseeing. So I'm asked to talk about this topic a little bit. Um, so during the pandemic, it's a little difficult to travel freely, but in Japan, it's, it has been fine with me, especially during off-peak time or without the local restrictions. And so I would like to share some points about traveling and sightseeing in Japan. So Japan is still uh, one of the most densely populated countries in the world. So uh, personally, my imagination before coming to Japan was a um, very crowded place um, with full of people in the train, jammed in the train, and really difficult to go around, and difficult to find greeneries. But I was very surprised to find lots of nature and parks in a walking distance, but also during vacations, you can go escape from the noise to uh, nature. So um, in Japan, um, I can find this um, diversity of climates. Um, and because the country is located from the north to the south, so it has really diverse ecosystems. So in the northern region, you can enjoy uh, snowy winter and you can have like snow festivals. And in the northern region, you can enjoy subtropical weather and beach and the blue uh, waters. And because Japan has uh, thousands of islands, um, and you can have even an activity that's called island hopping. So apparently, you can go through different islands and see the different uh, types of, of uh, nature and eat different types of food. And also, uh, about 70% of Japan consists of mountains. And so it also has 200 volcanoes. So apparently about one tenth of the world active volcanoes are located in Japan. And might be scary for some of you, but um, actually provides lots of very beautiful and um, hot spring. <laughs> it relaxes your body really well. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a paradise for me. And so I was wondering, Kai Sensei, what's your favorite location to visit? Uh, well, actually, I'm Japanese, but uh, I like Japan a lot because Japan is so long from those 2000, as already introduced. Uh, and so we have totally different uh, landscapes, cultures, and climates, everything, especially the um, the, the island um, or Hokkaido uh, at the, uh, located uh, at the North Coast or Okinawa located at uh, the uh, South Coast are totally different. And the islands around there are totally different. So uh, I love it, visit there. Yeah, thank you. And I have some photos for you to look at from different parts of Japan. And I was wondering if you guys can tell where these photos are from. Maybe some of you have been to Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder, Cho Sensei, can you tell? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the first one is Hiroshima Itsukushima Strain. I went there before, it was a very beautiful place. And the second one is Mount Fuji. Yeah, it's a very famous place, right? Uh, oh, let's let's go clockwise. The third one oh, is um, <laughs> okay. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, I missed it. I, I don't know the third one. Third one maybe is Yoshino Mountain. 
Oh, yeah, uh, yeah it looks like, it looks, yeah. Yeah, close to uh, Tokyo, okay. uh, the Northern Alps. And yeah. you can find very nice hiking track there. Yeah. The last one I think is Ishigaki Island in Okinawa. I went there last summer, it's very beautiful. Yeah, so these are some photos. And if you haven't been to these places, and actually, yeah, it's, a, it's really nice photos as well, thank you. And also I like uh, different types of festivals and you can enjoy very different regional festivals in Japan, especially in summer. Um, for example, uh, Gyon Matsuri in Kyoto, uh, you can enjoy this kind of different mat matsuri and then feel the culture and tradition also. Um, but also there are like seasonal festivals like han um, Hanami or Cherry Blossom Festival. Mm -hmm. And there are like uh, other cultural festival like Hinamatsuri that we had uh, two days ago on Friday, uh, praying for girls' growth. And we also have um, different theme parks or many different entertainments, not just, you know, nature or uh, um, festivals, right? So I was wondering, um, Lisa, say if you can tell, like, you know, entertainment activity that you like to enjoy. Yeah, I like Disney and the USJ. Actually, I yeah. bought the a new passport of USJ and uh, uh, open go there with my kids. Yeah, yeah. I don't have annual pass, but I would like to have <laughs> <laughs> uh, But there are also very different um, traditional theme parks like Meiji Mura and Nippon Edo Mura, and I, I invite you to also check those out. And so I also um, think it's very important to have very efficient uh, traveling system and which Japan is quite famous for. Uh, there are lots of trains, um, buses, monorails and ships, and they are very uh, convenient to travel. And even um, as a woman to travel alone has been fine uh, uh, so far. And um, to accommodate, uh, as for accommodation, you can also enjoy, enjoy uh, Japanese beans, yokan, which provides Japanese food um, and hot springs and uh, futons that you can you know, feel <laughs> living in Japanese house. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of uh, student discounts as well. And yeah, I was wondering, Chosen said you can go on with the food. Okay. After traveling, let's talk about uh, food in Japan. Food in uh, Japanese food also, we, we call it as uh, washoku is traditional Japanese cuisine, which refers to individual Japanese food, all one set of Japanese dishes. Um, Washoku was uh, registered as UNESCO Intangible Culture Heritage in 2013. It's very famous for its well, uh, as very healthy food due to a low calorie, nutritious and well-balanced diet. There are uh, individual Japanese food, or you can call it informal washoku, as you can see here on the right, we have it. It has some examples here on, on our slide, uh, such as sushi, sukiyaki, udon, soba, tempura, and so on. And a set of Japanese dish, dishes um, also taken as formal washoku. Washoku is characterized, uh, characterized by the use of various seasonal fresh food. Here you can see on the left, here is a cause. It's a spring cause using sakura, you can see on the top, the pink, the pink cherry bottoms and using uh, seasonal food in the course. Okay, let's go to foundation of washoku. Foundation of uh, Japanese food is ichiju sansai. Ichiju means one soup. Sansai means three dishes. A rice here is not mentioned because it's a stable food. When you go to a cafeteria on, on campus, it's possible and very common to have meals like this. Here you can see on the right top, we have two pictures. It shows the uh, cafeteria food here on campus. It's very well balanced and healthy. Well, Washoku is also very famous for its raw food and fermented foods such as natto and miso. Natto is made of soybeans. They are streamed and put in straw pipes with uh, natto yeast where they ferment and become very sticky. People make natto with soy sauce, chopped green onions, we also call it wasabi in Japanese, and mustard to and eat, with very, eat it with hot rice. I think foreigners may take a while to get used to its peculiar smell. And miso is another common Japanese food made of soybeans. Let's see 
Here you can see on the left, you can see uh, itadakimasu and gochisou sama deshita. Itadakimasu is a phrase to express is, uh, appreciation to food. It's like saying grace before meal. Not only for the meal made by, made by others, even by ourselves, you can say itadakimasu. I think it's come from nature worship uh, to show the appreciation to what we take from nature. And then when you finish eating, you can say gochisou sama deshita in Japanese. It means thanks for the meal. Okay, we talked about washoku, but not, not only traditional washoku, you can also find other various food here. Japanese cuisine has been also uh, opened up to influence from foreign cuisines in the modern area. Dishes inspired by foreign food like um, ramen, gyoza, which means dumplings, as well as food like spaghetti, curry, and hamburgers, and much more. And it's also possible to find halal food here on campus and in restaurant. I like Japanese ramen very much. It's quite diverse with different kinds of soup, toppings, and noodle styles, as well as regional uh, variations. The same with other food. And another one I want to recommend is natto toast. Think about this food natto mixed with green onion and soy sauce and the fried egg on the on the top, it's very tasty. I just had it for dinner yesterday. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lisa, what do, you, what do you think? Do you want to have a try? Yeah, I want to try one time. <laughs> yeah, and I want to ask Professor Kai, how about natto toast? What's your favorite dish? <laughs> well, I'm a Japanese, so I, I think the, the natto should be on the rice, but it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You could try, but I won't. <laughs> But uh, um, I wish to emphasize that as a Japanese, so I wish to emphasize that in Japan, actually, uh, we have a whole bunch of different cuisine, and uh, Japanese is very picky about the foods. <laughs> so based on my experiences, actually, for example, like Italian restaurants in Japan are better than those in Italy. So um, I think anyone can enjoy foods in Japan. Okay, uh, that's from me about Japanese food. Thank you, and I will pass my board to uh, Professor Kudeman to talk about some academic things, please. Okay. Thank you, um, Zhang Sensei. So before I begin, I would like to acknowledge um, what's happening in Ukraine, and we're very concerned, and we really hope that Ukraine can be peaceful again um, as soon as um, possible. So let me talk about um, campus life and study. Um, so Japanese universities um, are just like universities everywhere. Um, students come here, students study, students learn. Um, new techniques, new knowledge, and also develop their skills there in classes, in um, laboratories, and also they do a lot of self-study um, at home or at the library, sometimes with their groups. Um, I would like to um, explain um, some uh, experiences that I have um, done with my students and my friends um, during the field study, and also I, I would like to share some of the excellent research infrastructure that Japan has and some friends that I made when I was an international student here. Next, please. Right, so this is a course that I taught in um, CBCMB, so it's Chemistry Biology Combined Major Program. It's, it's no longer operating now. But at that time, we took some students to a marine station um, in Wakayama. And the marine station is uh, uh, called the Seto Marine Biological Laboratory that belongs to Kyoto University. There we stayed for five to six days usually, and we uh, learn about marine animals, about their habitats, and we collected some um, specimens and identified them using the available tools in, in, in that research station. Next, please. So this is a picture of some, some students observing um, the visualization of sea urchin. So sea urchin is an invertebrate, a marine invertebrate that is quite abundant in, in um, Wakayama. And here you can induce the release of sperm and eggs. And you can actually do the external fertilization in the, in the glass jar. You see here the pictures of the fertilized eggs. You can see some um, layers forming that basically this is, well, if you, you learn biology, this is the slow block of um, polyspermy. Next, please. And these are some samples that we collected um, in the marine station, in the, in the area around the marine station. You see quite an abundance of um, different marine invertebrates here. Yeah, I think the black one seems very special. Oh yeah, it, the, the, it, it's the, the middle one, right? The, yeah. It's the third one from the left. It's actually a um, feather star. 
It's an animal. It, it looks like a bit like a, a seaweed or something like that, but it's actually an animal. And uh, part of um, it's the same group as uh, sea urchins and also sea stars. Next, please. Right. So this is a trip that we took to. Uh, I took some of my students to a supercomputer in Kobe. It belongs to Rikeng. Rikeng is the national um, research um, body in Japan. So it was a very big thing at that time. It was used to model a lot of stuff, one of which is um, what's happening in the cell or how the human heart beats. Okay? And we went there and talked to some scientists there and we look at the facility there. It's just the, 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 the supercomputer is no longer operating now. It was commissioned, decommissioned in 2020. And now um, the place hosts uh, Fugaku. Okay? So Fugaku is the fastest supercomputer in the world, even now. Next, please. I think one slide, Sorry. right, it's here. This is another um, excellent infrastructure that I've been using since I was a student. So this is called Spring 8. So it's a particle accelerator that accelerates uh, electrons to reach the speed very close to the speed of light. And with magnets that bend the movements of the electrons, then you can actually generate a very, very bright X-rays, and you can use these extremely bright X-rays to do a lot of things. For my case, because I'm a structural biologist, I use this to determine the crystal structures of proteins. So, Professor Kai, what do you think? Um, what are the what is the hot research topic in Japan nowadays? Mm, actually, uh, as you may know, the, uh, almost every year researchers in Japan have been awarded Nobel prizes. So we have lots of really technologies or uh, sciences, but among those, because I'm a researcher in bioscience, uh, I would say maybe the uh, IPS induced pluripotent stem cell is one of those. But of course, um, not only uh, biomedical field, but also we have many other leading technology and inventions such as nanotech, robotics, or AIs or supercomputers. So um, I think students can explore the home pages of the universities. And once you guys enrolled, um, students can, can learn such leading technologies and their applications. Yeah, thank you, Sai-sensei. So it's a good, the good thing about doing research in Japan is that even students are allowed to use extremely high um, sophisticated, highly sophisticated materials and, and equipment. So you can learn a lot of things here. So next, please. So not only studying, not only researching, you can do a lot of other stuff here during your um, spare time. Okay, So you can make a lot of friends. And with them, you can do a lot of stuff, sports, you can play music. So there's a picture of me playing music, playing in a band with me, with my lab mates in the, in the, in the friend's wedding. You can also do um, gather together with your friends, or go to karaoke, go to um, traveling together. I think that's all from me. Let's uh, move on to um, uh, health and medical stuff in Japan by uh, Professor Lee. Professor Lee, go ahead, please. Thank you, Professor. And I think during this time and the pandemic, students are very concerned about health care. As some of you already know, Japan is a global leader in medical care and the insurance system with high coverage of the SIF and the safety net that support all members of the society. Of course, including uh, international students, the uh, medical system it makes it very convenient to receive high quality care and receive uh, services for cheaper price. That is because Japan has a national health insurance and the insurance, 70% of the total medical cost is covered by NHI. Individual only need to pay 30% of the total medical bill. It will also cover dentist treatment. NHI is required for all residents of Japan and international students can enroll for a relatively low amount among with the resident registration at the city hall. Uh, in addition, the insurance has a system for refunding medical expenses that exceed your individual uh, limit if your medical cost in a single month are high. Since international students are usually exempted from the tax, uh, insurance 
premium is quite cheap, about $100 uh, dollars per year. And I should also mention that if international students are coming here with children, their medical expenses are almost 100% uh, covered by the insurance as we are. So Kai Sensei, uh, in your opinion, what are the great things about the Japanese medical system and health insurance? Uh, well, um, I stayed in the United States for 10 years, uh, seven years and then 10 years in Singapore. And then also I visited many different countries as a tourist. And I would say that uh, Japan is a great um, country which is providing very high quality of the medic medical care. And good thing is that uh, we can, for example, if you feel something bad with eye, you can go straight to the uh, ophthalmology uh, without going the uh, general physician. I think most of the countries, people have to go to the general physician to get the opinion, they get the reservation, the specialist, and it takes time, right? But in Japan, from the beginning, you can go to the specialist, and I think that's a great thing. So I can freely go to the ENTs or gynecology or whatever, I, as I wish and uh, uh, it, it saves my time and the money. And uh, um, the, the, the clinic, in a small clinic in the town uh, provides actually very high quality. And sometimes they provide the surgeries and, and I'm totally happy about it. Yeah, it's really convenient. Thank you for your sharing your information. And another point I want to mention is that you, uh, most university has sales center and usually our service are free. Health Center uh, conduct annual checkup for all members of the university. Also, students can receive counseling support when the student uh, feel distressed or feel homesick. Uh, CC Center, have you ever been to a university health center before? Yeah, I went there for um, not, uh, several times. I think um, it's very convenient, like if you, uh, really get sick and and need something like painkillers. You can get it nearby on campus and for free. I think it helps a lot. Thank you. And I think many students, especially uh, PhD students, may already have families or planning family during their study. In Japan, there are a lot of in, uh, institutional and uh, financial support for childbirth and child raising. In the case of uh, childbirth, the government provides uh, childbirth allowance about $3,600. Moreover, international students' hospital expenses for uh, childbirth can be varied. It's also my experience. Yeah, and the government also provides a child allowance until uh, 18 years old. So most uh, nursery schools in Japan can accept children as young as two months old. It's very helpful for international students and the researchers to balance the research and the child care. And also for students, the cost of nursery school is almost entirely waived. Also when kids are sick, they can go to facilities especially for uh, sick children. So uh, you may be wondering about current health measures in Japan during the pandemic. Why are the vaccines are full covered the state? PCR tests are covered by the insurance and the inpatient treatment is also free of charge. The Japanese, Japanese government has prepared enough bed and medical staff for responsible patient, which will be make international students uh, feel at ease. So far, we, don't, we haven't feel any difficulty and everything is still in order. That's all for my part. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lee Sensei. Thank you all for sharing your experiences. Dear audience, now I'm going to ask for your opinion. What are you interested to learn more about Japan? Please scan this QR code or the link that we shared in the chat box to answer. You can select more than one.
Are you ready? Well, here comes the result. It looks like uh, campus life is the most popular among these four choices. I voted for travel and sightseeing. I love visiting Japanese old architectures, houses, and buildings. They are not only practical, but also classy and sophisticated. Anyway, thank you professors for sharing your stories. And I'm sure the audience have spent a meaningful time here. Professors, are you staying with us until the end of part one? Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Please enjoy. Coming up next, stay with us for the second video presentation made by JASO about the detailed information on studying and living in Japan. Please watch. Hello, everyone. The Japan Student Services Organization, JASO, we provide a variety of information regarding study in Japan. In this video, I would like to give you the basic information on study in Japan. I recommend the booklet named Study in Japan Basic Guide as First Step. You can get summarizing information about study in Japan from this booklet. PDF version of this booklet is available on our Study in Japan website. Besides the Study in Japan Basic Guide, you can obtain a lot of information from our Study in Japan website. You can find this website by searching Study in Japan. These are five types of higher education institutions in Japan accepting international students. Except for graduate school, eligibility for admission to higher education institution is 12 years of schooling and completion of secondary education. Courses at graduate schools are divided to two parts, master's program or first phase of doctoral program of two years, and second phase of doctoral program of three years. For master's course or first phase of doctoral programs, a bachelor's or equivalent degree is required. For doctoral programs, Applicants should be a master's or equivalent degree holder. There are also many international students studying Japanese language at Japanese language institutes in Japan. In general, lectures in Japanese universities are conducted in Japanese. Therefore, in many cases, Japanese Language Proficiency Test JLPT, or Examination for Japanese University Admission for International Students EJU, is required for admission. In order to follow the lectures, Japanese Language Proficiency is required as shown here. So, in most cases, international students study Japanese language at a Japanese language institutes before applying to universities. However, more and more Japanese institutions are offering degree programs in English. If you are applying for a course taught in English, English language proficiency is required as shown here. Please make sure to confirm again about required scores on latest application guidelines of the school of your choice. According to our survey, Average monthly living cost of international students in Japan is about 850 US dollars. Living expenses in the big cities are relatively higher comparing with rural areas. International students can apply for the permission to engage in activity other than that permitted under the status of residence previously granted which allows you to work part-time in Japan up to 28 hours per week. About 70% of international students are working part-time. Average monthly earning is about 540 US dollars. This table shows the tuition for students who were accepted by a Japanese higher education institution as a regular student. Generally, tuition fees of Japanese universities are not so expensive, compared to US universities. For the first year, 
you need to pay an admission fee in addition to the tuition. In addition, facility and equipment usage fee is required. Please note that the academic fees in private universities are diverse depending on majors and courses. This slide is average tuition fees of Japanese studies for foreign students and Japanese language institution. There are two types of financial assistance for international students, scholarships, and tuition exemption or reduction by each university. Most of the Japanese universities have on-campus scholarships and tuition exemption or reduction scheme that international students may also apply. In addition, there are four kinds of scholarships for international students. First, Japanese government mixed scholarship is a full scholarship providing monthly stipend, tuition, and round-trip airfares. You can apply with the recommendation from your home country's Japanese embassy or your Japanese host university. Second, Monbuke Gakusho Honors Scholarship is scholarship for privately financed international students. Application will be accepted through your Japanese host school. Third, JASO Student Exchange Support Program is for the exchange students coming to Japan based on the exchange agreements between universities. Please check with your home university for the availability. Fourth, scholarships by private foundations and local governments. In general, applications are made by the Japanese universities. There are scholarships you can directly apply by yourself but the numbers are not so many. In addition, we releases the scholarship pamphlet every year. You can get more information about four types of scholarships from this pamphlet. The PDF version is available on the Study in Japan website. As you can see in this graph, the number of international students who find employment at Japanese companies is increasing every year. There are quite a number of job fairs specially organized for international students in Japan and each university has a career advising center to help students to find a job after graduation. Please make use of your experience of study in Japan to work in Japan. You can find further details as well as JASO's contact information on the Study in Japan website. JASO also has offices overseas, so if you have questions, please send an email to either the JASO office in your country, or to our office in Tokyo. We are happy to help you. Thank you for your time and attention. Well, it was very informative presentation, wasn't it? Now let's move on to students' voices session. Today we have our graduate, Jasil and Christel from Philippine, giving us their presentations and a video presentation by a graduate from Turkey. Who's going next? Uh, first, Jasil? Okay. Hello? Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yes. Can um, everybody see my screen? Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, magandang hapon. Uh, uh, that is uh, good afternoon uh, in Filipino. Maganda means beautiful. Hapon means afternoon but it can also mean Japan or Japanese. So it can be beautiful Japanese. Indeed, uh, Japan is very beautiful um, for studying as well as living. So um, let me share to you my experience as a student of Osaka University. I am an Osaka University alumnus. I just graduated um, last year and I, I'm under the double degree program between Osaka University and De La Salle University. So um, after graduation, I was um, hired by the Institute of Laser Engineering in Osaka University to be a researcher. Uh, Institute of Laser Engineering in Osaka University houses uh, one of the largest uh, laser facilities in Japan. And um, what I'm doing there is I'm uh, doing uh, 
computational um, researches about uh, optical materials. So just to share to you um, what are the things that I do in Osaka University, since I am a computational scientist, I uh, do simulations of different materials for different purposes. Um, here, we can see that uh, I, ca uh, I was able to um, do research in the field of energy, in the field of optical materials, chemical reactions, and even biophysics, where we simulated uh, different molecules related to different reactions in some biological processes. Uh, to give you a background how, how I was introduced to Osaka University, I first uh, went to Osaka University in the year 20, uh, 2013. I entered as a short-term program student in the quantum engineering design course program. So in this program, I, uh, I spent um, one year to experience uh, studying in Japan and doing research in Japan. Uh, I entered Kasai Laboratory. And to those uh, who are watching right now, uh, if you will notice, Kasai Laboratory that time is a very internationalized laboratory where um, I think more than half of uh, the laboratory members are international students from Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, and from the Philippines, of course. And uh, most of the people here that you can see are already graduates. So uh, the short-term program um, exposed me to an international laboratory in Japan. And most of the courses that we took are in English. That's why it's um, easy for us to adapt in uh, the um, learning environment in Osaka University. Uh, some of the people here were already graduates of Osaka University. And because of um, graduating from a prestigious university like Osaka University, they were able to go to different places as experts in their fields. Dr. Alan Padama is already ahead in one of the top universities in the Philippines. Um, my friend here, uh, Dr. Ryan Arevalo, is already in, um, in Ireland. And uh, these uh, three friends of mine are all working in Japan, in Tokyo, and Osaka University as well. So somehow my experience in Osaka University um, gave me a chance to build networks in different parts of Japan and in the world. Uh, as well, uh, the reason why it's easier for international students to adapt in Osaka University is because of um, the international groups that we have. So in this case, since I'm a Filipino, uh, there are a lot of uh, Filipino students and even workers in Osaka University, um, and they welcomed us. They have uh, different activities such as sports fest where we played uh, Filipino games. And then we also did hanami or um, picnic under the uh, cherry blossom tree. So if you're international student, um, for sure, there will be a group of, uh, group of um, same nationality friends that you will really find here in Osaka University. Of course, uh, we, uh, we Filipino students are uh, studying here in, in Osaka University at different fields. So we have students uh, working on bio, bi biotechnology. There are students working on chemistry. This this, uh, this guy here um, works in a chemistry lab. Uh, this friend of mine here is a graduate from the IT, from information technology. And um, some students are um, studying mostly physics and other engineering courses. And aside, of course, from studies, what I like about studying in Japan is uh, the sightseeing opportunities that we can have. Uh, in, in Kansai region, we have the Universal Studios where you can um, go to uh, Harry Potter and maybe Super Mario Nintendo World and different sightseeing places at different seasons. This is the spring season, the autumn season, and you can also go to famous places like uh, the bridge, uh, this uh, Michael Bridge and uh, Naruto Village. So uh, it was a fun, fun experience. 
Uh, maybe just to give you a short video. Uh, it feels so, yeah, but it's short. You say it feels so. You say it feels so. You say it so. No sound. So this, uh, this is uh, when we welcome Filipino students in Osaka University where there are... Um, uh, there are new students coming last, uh, I think, three years ago. And every time that there are new students coming in Osaka University, we welcome them. So I hope uh, you got something from my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jaseel. Next presenter is Crystal. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Crystal? Yes. Sorry. Please go ahead. I'm sure I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So I am a student before in Osaka University. So my name is Christelle Alexa Garcia Perez. I studied in Osaka University from my master's for my master's degree until PhD, and my major is in advanced science and biotechnology. So I recently graduated last se September. So just for my background, so I took my bachelor studies in the Philippines from University of the Philippines. I also worked there for some time and as I joined the faculty. And then I already started my master's studies there in the Philippines, but then I felt like I wanted a change in environment. I wanted to try something new. So I tried applying here in Japan and I got in Osaka University wherein I took my master's under the program of uh, advanced science and biotechnology. And then I continued to pursue my PhD in the same laboratory and same program, under the same program. And I finished last year, September 2021. So, okay. So why did I choose to study in Japan? So we all know that Japan is well known for its advanced science and technology. And then next, there is a very rich culture here in Japan. If you go around the city, you'll find temples that you can visit and and a lot of beautiful nature or sceneries that you can enjoy. Like we used to hike in Mount Fuji and go uh, camping around. It's very nice. There are different seasons. You can enjoy spring, winter, or autumn. And then, of course, I would love to promote Osaka. So Osaka is a good place to stay in here in Japan because there's a balance of urban and rural. If you go to the city in Omeda, you'll get to enjoy city life. But here around in Osaka University, you can enjoy the nature, the peace and quiet of the rural area. And then uh, Osaka is also known as the food capital of Japan. Get to enjoy takoyaki, or konomiyaki, or whatever food you want to try. And of course, you can have fun here in Osaka. Universal Studios is very accessible. And it's around, uh, it's very near around uh, Kyoto, Kobe. So it's very easy to travel. And why would you choose Osaka University? So Osaka University is a known university who are who, who's uh, there are many laboratories who are front runners in their field or in their researches, and there are a lot of English programs being offered in Osaka University. So if you go around Osaka University, you'll see a rich culture because there are different students from different countries all over the world. So this is the uh, graduate program that I was in for five years. So it was uh, the Biotechnology Global Human Resource Development Program. There are different laboratories who are involved in this program. And for this program, let me just share an overview. The goal of this is to expose students to state-of-the-art research skills and in-depth knowledge in biotechnology. There are different fields to choose from from genetics to biochemistry, molecular biology, cellular engineering, protein technology, biochemical engineering. So I'm sure you can find something that you would love to pursue. And uh, this program is a five-year course wherein you'll uh, study two years for masteral and then you'll continue to three years in doctoral if you would love to. 
And there are two ways that you can uh, attend into this program. You can either join during spring uh, semester. So you will enter on a like starting April, or you can also join as an autumn semester student. You will start your classes on October. So this is just a short overview on the application process that I got. I went through when I was applying. I went through the university recommendation. So you can either apply through embassy or through the university. So you'll submit your documents or be preliminary screening. These are like the list of documents that you'll be needing. Maybe you can take a screenshot if for those who are interested. There will be question and answer exam and interview from the professors in your department. And then after two months, you will get the results. And then they'll be the one to forward you to the um, Mombuka Gokshu so you can have a scholarship. So once you join the university under this program, you'll be, uh, you'll be supported for your tuition expenses and also for your living allowance. So these are just some of the advantages of studying here in Japan, specifically in Osaka University. So first, you'll have your personal growth because uh, when I first came here, I think a fresh, you know, fresh graduate student or start just starting my master's, I really learned a lot from living away from my family, away from your comfort zone. And then you'll mature and learn a lot of things, not only in the lab, but also in how you deal with everyday uh, experiences, like doing chores or doing adulthood. <laughs> And then for your research ideas, so you're in the lab, your, your senses will really encourage you to think outside the box. You will not be limited. You'll be encourage, encourage you to pursue whatever interest you are. It's like a big thing, like uh, your senpai or your senior will teach you and in the end, you'll be the one teaching your juniors or your co-highs. So at that uh, experience, you'll, while teaching others, you're learning a lot also. And then the research facilities here are really good. Like whatever you, you'll need, you just have to tell it to your sensei and they, it, it, it will be provided. So maybe it's a very big difference from the research uh, industry where it came from. And uh, so just to continue about the research facilities, these are the different field in our department. And these are like some researches that are done in this department. And these are just some of the facilities that the department have. And just want to share the research I did before. We would do microinjection. We use Daphnia Magna. So this is a zooplankton wherein we would inject plasmid uh, like with DNAs or RNAs or proteins. Like if you heard of CRISPR-Cas, we would have mutated uh, animals. So this is how you inject or take the eggs of the zooplankton under the microscope. And then you we will inject, as I mentioned earlier. For example, here we have the uh, green fluorescent protein injected in the eggs of the Daphnia. So we can observe its development, the localization of the cells. And this is specifically my research wherein I in our lab, we called our team as the gender benders because we study the sex of Daphnia, how they develop into male or female, so we can produce semi-male or semi-female animals. So this is a feminized male and a masculinized female of the Daphnia. So aside from the research, this is one of my favorite things in within five years of my stay here, the lab activities that we have. So the lab that I entered is really, it's like a family. It's more than just like colleagues or workmates, but it's a family because you're together for most of the time for five days in a week. So these are my senses in our, in our trips. So we have two trips during summer and winter because ski is my sensei's favorite hobby. So we would go snowboarding and skiing on winter or going to different places around Japan during summer. Aside from the official lab trips, our as lab mates would also go around Japan. We would go hiking, seeing the flowers, or doing picnics or barbecue. 
and you get to enjoy wearing yukata or your kimono. And these are some of the parties in the lab. We love doing parties for every reason, for welcome, farewell. This is Setsubun. It's a Japanese culture where you throw beans to monsters. And then we like this is uh, this picture was taken when uh, my batchmates and I were busy preparing for our PhD entrance exam so we couldn't go to a summer fair because we we're busy and then our lab prepared a summer fair for us we wore our yukatas and we even have the somen in the bamboo and then here they even prepared this inflatable pool so we can also play the summer games and halloween is a big thing that we enjoy in the lab we would dress up in different costumes and we also enjoy doing hanami or picnic and uh, in Osaka University, there is a sports festival wherein you get to compete with different uh, laboratories in different departments too. Our, we're not very good in the games, but we love cheering for each other and going out of the love to play. So if you have different hobbies, you can enjoy basketball or table tennis or baseball or basketball or just being cheerleaders. So what's next? So after studying here in Japan, maybe you'll ask, well, what can you do? So either you can go to academe at, as study as a postdoc student or postdoc researcher, or you can join the faculty. Or you can also apply in different industries, uh, in research facilities or food or pharmaceutical electric companies. But I also there's also a chance to try other fields. So it's never too late if you want to move to whatever you're passionate about. So after studying uh, five years in biotechnology, now I am part of this. It's one of the best patent or law offices here in Japan. We're in Vicator for, uh, we protect the patents of uh, many Nobel, uh, no Nobel Prize researches. So I'm from Sasako uh, Yamamoto, and I am a biotechnology specialist in this company now. So yes, so just last message, maybe just take a leap of faith until you spread your wings, you will have no idea how far you can fly. So if you're interested, if there's a, a little or spark of interest that you, maybe you're thinking you want to study here in Japan, like just try, you'll never know, you'll enjoy it for sure. Or in, you'll learn a lot of experience, and new experiences here. So I hope to see you here. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Zethi, Jasil, and Crystal for wonderful presentation. Okay. Hope you've been able to visualize your life as a student in Japan by now. But how about work after graduation? I would like to show you more about finding jobs in Japan. Let's invite Professor Noriko Wozaki from Center for International Education and Exchange of Osaka University. In this video presentation, international students will share their job hunting experiences in Japan. Please enjoy. Hello, everyone. My name is Noriko Uosaki from Osaka University. Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you are enjoying it. I've been assisting international students finding job in Japan for about 10 years. So I'm very happy to be here today to talk about job hunting systems in Japan, which is rather peculiar. So please listen. The typical job hunting process in Japan is very different from most of other countries in the world. It's long and complicated. If you'd like to work in Japan after graduation, it's better to start early. The job hunting can start more than one year before graduation. Here's the screening flow. It takes about eight to nine months on average. They start with web entries, then company briefings, writing CVs, entry sheets, taking various kinds of exams, 
participate in group discussion and multiple rounds of group interviews and individual interviews until they finally got official job offers. It's a long way, but at least we can say that there's no nepotism or anything like this. It's a fair screening. One more thing I'd like you to keep in mind if you like to work in Japan after graduation is that Japanese language skills are very important. Most Japanese companies expect foreign workers to have some Japanese language skills so that they can communicate with other employees. Next, let's listen to the real voices from three graduates who could successfully found job after graduation. The first speaker had a good command of Japanese, so she went all through the process in Japanese. The second speaker did it in English. And the third speaker can speak Japanese and successfully got an academic job after she got PhD degree. So let's watch. The second slide, I want to show you the first thing you'll need to do is that you need to choose the industry and the company. Since it's too late, there are not so much, there are not too many choices I have. So I choose the industry that in favor of my, of my the most possibly. So I choose the industry, choose the construction and that which relates to my major. So a lot of um, construction company that I tried. Finally, I got the offer from the Tobisima Corporation. So how do you get the information from those company? I need to, uh, I almost like use the MyNavi. I think it's really useful. There are many useful information from the, those companies. At that website, you can find out what's the specific and company they give your how much salary they gave and how much bonus they will give you or how much bonus you don't know but you can know that mostly twice a year of the bonus and uh, other than that you may ter you may pay attention to the allowance just like the transportation allowance and housing allowance mm, some working place some company has a dormitory and you only need to pay 10,000 yen a month to live there. It's really cheap. And as an other welfare, just like um, some, maybe a girls want to give birth to a child, you also can get the salary when you have the weekend. And other holidays you will, you will have. And other thing you want you need to pay attention to is the company size. How many employees does this company have? And and when did this company established? That really matters. And the last one I want to um, I want to tell you is that working location. Some people want to work at Tokyo since so there are many chances and and there are many companies. Some people want to stay in Osaka or some places. So you can pay attention to that. So after that, you may find out some companies that you are really interested in. So you can come to their official website. On their official website, you will get more information that you can look out what kind of projects they are doing in present and what kind of what kind of person they really like to have? Do you have those qualities? So do you really want to enter in that company? Next part. Uh, so actually there are many uh, websites uh, for online job hunting. So the first one, maybe the connect job is the uh, most famous, uh, the online platform for online job hunting. Then there is a daijob.com, uh, jobhacker.com, so maybe also this also uh, a famous, then jobfight.com. And you can search in Google and uh, there are many the online uh, platform for job hunting. 
So I will explain in detail uh, only one, uh, take an example for the connect job. Um, uh, they have uh, many uh, client at least for example in here I show this uh, Sony uh, and then Rakuten, Uniqlo and so on and in this platform you can uh, feel you can feel your information your experience your language skills and you can upload your CV and all the information about you then you can also write your expectation what kind of job uh, you look for then um, and so on what's it even in the location in Japan uh, in which uh, city you want to work for then after that after you complete your data upload your CV then the connect job will match uh, your background your experience with the, the company so after that the connect job will contact you if there is a company match with your um, profile so this is also my experience so the connect job contact me then um, they the first the first uh, first one uh, the connect job uh, will interview uh, me then after that I will get the interview from the company. So you can try uh, this strategy, these steps. Okay. Um, when it comes to looking for academic positions, uh, the website that's well known is JREC in Portal. As the name suggests, it's a portal site for uh, looking for academic jobs and there's lots of public job postings that come on this website and are shared here all the time so uh, if you visit this website it has a japanese and english page and you can use keywords to search or as you see here just look through the different locations or the research field that you're interested in the job type or um, a lot of times we're interested in a particular, um, let's say, research field plus a certain location. So if you're looking for, um, in my case, English teaching jobs in Kansai, you can filter your search using multiple conditions. I don't have the page open here, but if you go to JREKIN website, you can check that for yourself. And it's really convenient and gives you uh, pretty much everything that's openly shared out there. So all universities use this website quite often. And some of other features that I found useful on this website were uh, setting notifications. So if I was, if you're interested in a certain position or a certain keyword that you don't wanna like look for manually all the time, you can set notifications for that and you will be emailed uh, whenever something related to that certain keyword is posted on this website. Thank you for watching. Well, whether or not you'd like to work in Japan after graduation, I hope you come to Japan for studying someday in the near future. Thank you. How was it? Hope you get some idea on finding a job in Japan. Now, we have a video message especially made for you to wrap up part one. Why, uh, meanwhile, please check the chat box for the links to access university sessions scheduled in part two. Hello, to show our support for international students waiting overseas, we collected short messages from our students. Please stay strong and keep your motivation. Hola, saludos desde Osaka. Soy Jimena de México. Sé que han sido momentos muy difíciles para ustedes, pero espero desde el fondo de mi corazón que pronto estén con nosotros. Los estamos esperando. Saludos. Hello, I'm Emily from Kenya. Kanda Chano, Ayanagan, 
Осакаг их сургуулиас мэнчилж байна. Та бүхэндээ утгагүй уусан байдаг ч найдаж байна. Зүхнэс зүхэнд бид бүгдээрээ хамтдаа шүү. А Японыг нэг хай. Ингээл айлаврын янгал оппом Японыг ванны сэрэн кайэтэнэ ашимсикэнэ. Адвэрэ ингээл атмосфертод ирэхэ. Нанны намаскарэ. Джамбо. Хакуна матата. Ниума хата Кения. Ко анафунзи вотэ амбо мнатакива кужунга на вио вику хуку Японии. Musikate tama wala ambao wanatakiwa kujiunga na chuo kikuu cha Osaka. Musikate tama tunawangoja, tunawatakia kila laheri. Karibuni sana. Untuk teman-teman di Indonesia, tetap semangat ya. Kami doakan yang terbaik untuk kalian dari sini. Semoga kalian bisa segera bergabung dengan kami dan datang ke Jepang secepatnya. Halo teman-teman di Indonesia, salam dari Osaka. Saya berdoa semoga pandemi COVID-19 segera berakhir. Tetap semangat dan sehat. Dan saya menunggu kalian semua untuk melihat bunga sakura bersama. Gambar teko desai. Moka e dua wai. Ungu wai e makanta Osaka University. Ungu Nigerian. Semba e lene se neni wakose kita lu Japan. Sani wa. Namaste. Mira nam Priti hai. Mae India se hu. Abi Osaka University ki student hu. Mae apsi ehi kena chati hu. के धैर्य हिम्मत और विश्वास रखिए आप जापान जल्दी आ रहे हैं नमस्ते सलाम शाहलार अज़रबैजान और आदिल दिस सलाम मैं मुद्वार हम तेज़ ज़मान दो बुरा गलाश तुम इधर थिरमिन है शेब बस यानों में चाहे वैसे दिस है लेदर दाम में बुलार सिया उस तनी तो स्नाज़ नहीं इमाइ तेवियरे इविदे मस्तू in the School of Engineering, Department of Applied Chemistry. I know it's tough that many of you cannot come into the country, and for myself, it's also difficult as I can't make any new friends. But I hope you guys keep strong and stay strong, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Xin chào các bạn, mình là Linh đến từ Việt Nam. Mình chúc các bạn sẽ có một sức khỏe dồi dào và có thể nhanh chóng đến Nhật Bản để du học nhé. So everyone, please stay strong, and we are looking forward to seeing you in Osaka University. Kamate kudasai ne. Zilu yuan xian shou bing jian, han xiang feng gong ke shi jian. We are in the Daban University. Hello, I am Sayel Tagalaguna, fourth year of Ayon's Osaka University. I am going to be able to learn from you to learn from you. Pero sulit na sulit ang experience sa dami na matututunan mo sa loob at sa labas ng classroom at sa dami na makikilala mo mula sa iba't ibang bansa. Kaya tara na dito sa Japan. Anyaseyo, orhanayga yorobundura hega jagiru kandugi sumuhamnida. Kaya gishi temune wani kinja hasusisundayo. Yorshimi norakam mankam jowong kyoroa naol jini. Kaya hango shizumyang kukisimida. Kroon ikkakaji fighting eduseyo. Osaka deyakyo to mannayo. Yugakusei no minasan. Tajaha! 私たちも現在留学に行くことができず辛い思いをしています皆さんが早く留学に来れることを願っています日本で会えるのを楽しみにしていますじゃあよはい皆さん大阪大学の汗やんけ店長久田です、えー、今コロナで大変やけどみんなどうしてる大変だと思うけど大阪は逃げへんでみんな頑張ってねじゃあよろしくはいえー、東アジア拠点長の小水尾です、えー、あなたは夢を持ってますかあなたの目的しっかりした目的を持ってますかそれさえ持っていれば必ず道は開けます人間負けたら終わりじゃなくて諦めたら終わりです諦めないで夢を Hi everybody, I'm Scott North, director of Osaka University's North American Center for Academic Initiatives. Two years have passed since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, and in those two years we've had almost no visitors. We're very lonely here, and we're waiting for you to come. We hope to see you soon. Bye!